we are going to be doing some object source lighting here a little bit different than what we did here so we have dungeon style base right a lot of similarities there lady with the sword but instead of her having the torch in her hand like this artisan guild here we got a reaper figure this is an old classic figure I painted this one a bunch of times we got the torch behind here so a lot of object source lighting back here and then we kind of creep into some regular light over here so this should be really fun I just did this as part of a basing tutorial and here let's get some of the other ones that we here was another one that we did with torchlight now this is going to be a tutorial video on my patreon page because I want to do uh, shadows cast shadows on a miniature which I've never really had a chance to do before and then what we did and you'll be seeing some of these hey grand oracle look at this here right at the beginning how are you doing so grand oracle i don't know if you saw this hey armored wolf i just put this video up at least i think i did right yeah i think i put this video up on the patreon page uh so i got these things primed and now they're they're ready to paint on stream and in some videos so grand oracle really nice to see you here's another one again we're trying to fool around with these columns from make it epic basing that oh actually here armored wolf was the one with all the jugs well there's a couple of them so there's uh ah, look there's there's a bunch of them right there and then this one also yeah this has some so you got one here ah and another one over there so we made use of the oh and then again another column right there we're also going to make use of Fluorescent paint once again, right here. Yeah, we're going to do that. We've got our orange and our yellow, and then kind of the rest of the usual type things. Now, I'm just going to get going here straight away with some pre-glaze. Uh, that doesn't really seem like Van Dyke Brown. That seems more like uh, burnt umber, <laughs> oddly enough. We have some of our Mars black over here. Yeah, we've got some Mars black over here. Now we're going to take some of our thinner here because we've got to get really way down into some of these uh, crevices here. Then we got to hit the back of this here wall. Oh, what the heck? I might even throw some perlene black. That's the dark green into it. Hey, Lamines. Uh, actually, Lamines, I was going to send you some messages uh, just with some questions. Yeah, la last night did not go well. To, to say that's like the understatement of the last 10,000 years or so yeah pretty much since the last ice age that's about uh, I think the last time you run into that kind of an understatement now we gotta let this stuff set here see how shiny and all that stuff is well gonna have to let that set now we are gonna go over here and we're gonna start to think about some of our object source lit area so Laminus, I, I definitely hope the things have gone better for you. Oh, uh, Laminus, I did just start a print with that Soraya, basically the simple gray. Uh, I, I, I made sure it was the files that I printed before. And uh, they're just like simple Diwali figures, right? Because that's what I want to use it for. Not for hollowed out stuff or even big stuff. But those kind of smaller things where I actually really kind of need to see what the heck is going on as far as like the supports and stuff. Now, what would also be helpful here is a combo. Remember, the uh, naphthol red does have some staining to it. And that's what we got going on here. Now we got some naphthol red. There's a little bit of the, uh, the Egyptian violet in there. Hey, Raven Cat, nice to see you back. So, again, sorry this stream is later. I had. Obviously, uh, well, and sorry I didn't get a chance to stream last night. Uh, last night was not super, to, to say the least. So, uh, let's see, so Grand Oracle, it's so funny. I'm trying to think the last time I used an airbrush. I, I think it was June of 2021. And even for priming now, okay, yeah, so it took me 45 minutes to brush the primer on here, maybe, but... I was talking to Kathy and that kind of at the same time. So it was very mindless kind of stuff to actually prime all of these things and get all the stuff down in the area. When you think of the setup time of an airbrush and the cleanup time and then the time to do this, it was basically about the same darn thing. So I said, you know what the heck with this? We're just I'll just prime them by with the brush. 
Uh, well, Raven can't. I hope that the move goes really well. I know that those things are super, super, super. Uh, so many levels, they're difficult. And uh, just me trying to move some things around the house constantly because of the situation here. It's like we're moving parts of the house every other day. Yeah, Grand Oracle, you don't need the fan, right? You just basically, I mean, there will be a little bit of spatter, but, you know, a little bit of spatter from a brush. We get spatter from this here, too. Look, you can see the little spatters on my hand right there. All right, see how this is getting a little less shiny here? Now, this is, I'm going to actually start removing some of this. Because remember, if you recall, the, yeah, let's get some of our sponges out here. We've got the naphthol, and now the brown matter is not a staining color, but the Egyptian violet sure as heck is. And look, of course, too, this is also an absorbent material. Now, the miniature, not so much. And again, this is a Reaper miniature. If you guys, uh, <laughs> if anybody has seen the old painting pyramid videos, you will see this figure and some of the other ones that are kind of along the same line. Again, it's a Reaper figure. The a huge portion of the early tutorial videos were done with Reaper miniatures. Yep, Raven Cat, this is the legendary pre glaze. It's the gloriously messy, hideous face. Uh, so Lamines, uh I did I send you some I think I sent you some pictures of some of the things uh, well, the Oliphants for sure. That that's that is actually the thing that could really be fun to have. Are, are a couple of those Oliphants. Uh, some are a little bit better for others than others for the game itself. Some might look a little bit nicer than others. And then there's uh, like I said, that might be better for the game. So Grand Oil, I think there's maybe. Hmm, well, let's see. I don't remember. I know the Reptus. Well, I remember when those were new way back in the day. I don't. I think this one. I don't think this is a newer Reptus right here. This one also is a classic one. I think all of the Egyptian theme ones were all classics. This one might be a little newer. I'm not sure. This Ogre Mage right here. Not sure. Where's my ah? There you are. So again, I hope that people were having a decent uh, a decent Friday today. I have completely forgotten what day and time it is again when uh, because we did the not treatment session on Wednesday, but did the transfusion and said that was a day of no sleep. So we've had several days. It's kind of like every day has been a Wednesday here. It's almost like every day is a Monday. Now we're gonna. Yeah, let's hit this first. Let's hit this first with uh, indigo. Maybe a smidge of Prussian blue. Maybe a little bit of our Van Dyke brown. Now this, being a metal figure, even though this is a staining color, we're just going to let that be somewhat dry brushed on. Not a lot of liquid, right? Because this, uh, this is a metal figure. And you can see we're, we're... I don't care. I'm even getting that on the face. Do I really care that much? Nah. <laughs> nope. Not a big deal. She just have a blue face. Yeah, Grand Oracle. When they first came out with the... Remember the square bases and such? Um, the, the square metal bases that came with them? Yeah, that was... It's interesting to kind of think. Of, look at look at the staining power of the indigo and the Prussian blue. Both Williamsburg, by the way. Just just to uh, before I forget. Now Raven Cat, funny you should mention that because I have printed out six of the ornaments. Uh, I'll, I'll probably print out some more, but I have I have six of them printed out already. So those those are those will take the place of our Tuesday or Thursday, sorry, 2D art. So our 2D art becomes semi three dimensional. Yeah, Raven Cat. Uh, well, of course we have to do Pluto, right? Because this is a pl pro Pluto household here. Uh, look, look at that. Even right now, 
And there's a difference there. Okay, let's get to some. Where did you go here? Uh, we'll just use this here. So yeah, Laminess, I'll try and uh, get those to you. I'm trying to think of the best way, actually, to get those to you. Obviously, they're just too darn big to put in an email. I know, well, it, I'm trying to think when was the last time I used my Dropbox. It's been a while, to say the least. Here, let's get a little bit more of that there. Uh, not Fanchion Red, that's the Naphthol Red. Uh, Raven Cat, I just... It just seemed like people wanted to, they said, well, we haven't really, it's not like we can't discover anything with all these amazing new instruments that we have, so we have to kind of de-discover something that somebody else did in the past and kind of rediscover it ourselves. It's, it's like, guys, look, you, you can actually go look at the surface of Pluto down to almost a few boulders on it. You don't need to be taking away other people's discoveries. Hey, Vic, Vic, how you doing? So, yeah, this is the this is the homemade fluorescent orange and, of course, our homemade fluorescent yellow made with the uh, Green Stuff World powders and some linseed oil. And, again, that is the same stuff that we used. Uh, now, these are two 3D printed miniatures. So, Laminez, this is definitely the kind of thing I would print out with the gray resin because it was so hard to see what the heck was a what the heck was part of the sculpt and what was just part of the supports so I think that that's the kind of thing that I definitely want to print with that ah uh, Google Drive I uh, actually <laughs> it's funny Lamines I had to give in <coughs> and actually get the well whatever the cheapest paid version of that is I think it's like a two hours a month or something like that so that the, the Google Drive can fit a lot more into it so yeah Lamanessa uh, I'll shoot you the the email and such yeah sorry I haven't had a chance to try out the the resin as glue slash filler yet uh, yeah Lama, I'll just I'll try and send you a message to fill you in uh, I was going to send you a message, but things were kind of changing hour by hour. And what I would have written you by the time you saw that message, perhaps, it would have actually been, uh, I don't want to say old news, but it would have been, well, a past crisis with a new one on the way. Uh, another five liter jug of resin. I know you were talking about that Lamines. Ah, look at that. Look at that. See how it happens really, really, really fast here. And how we start with the object source lighting. We're not going to impose this at the very end. We used to do that. Speaking of when these miniatures were new. <laughs> actually one of these miniatures I think might also be part of. Oh it's uh, one of these. Uh, Raven Cat or sorry Grand Oracle. Was oh it was part of the. Ah oh, what the heck was it. That was one of the non-metallic metal videos. Yes. One of the original, one of the original ones. We're talking way back in the day. Now I don't think I want to go sky blue-ish on this. We're gonna, I guess, I'm, we're gonna need some more of our radiant blue out here. But we're just going to use this for right now. Uh, let's see, the two-dollar one is that's it, Laminess. That's the one. Uh, probably gonna have to go further than that eventually, but for right now, at least, that is good enough. Uh, so Vic says that a Google D4 or a Google Drive. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I thought I thought there was something new and different there, Vic. But of course, that's uh, the phones always work against us, right? They they're always working against us, uh, changing what we type all the time. Mm. Wow, look at this is. <laughs> It's already quite the variation there. Now let's go to some of our radiant violet here. Start to gray this out just a smidge. Let's go back over here. Blammo. Whatever. These are just pieces of Sculpey right here. You got the Sculpey texture over there. And of course, where's it? Oh, we were using... Ah, we had to abandon our hummus, hummus containers 
but now it's a lot easier to use these on videos as in a million times easier and now I can actually see where the heck these things are so that is what we used around the exterior there same stuff that we use on our 40k bases also our Mines of Moria bases or Casa Doom whichever way whichever way you want to think of it now let me do just a smidge of wiping some of that away let's get some darks on the hair shall we hey Ranzarok nice to see you Van Dyke Brown yeah Van Dyke Brown let's put that here you know what? I might even go with a little bit of thinner on that so Ranzarok I hope that you had yourself a good Friday and of course this is going to help with our light and dark contrast but this is all about warm versus cool contrast right warm versus cool very important uh, I would say pretty darn important here uh, so so Vic we use the, the texture roller from green stuff world uh, of which I have at least 25 I might even have as many as 30 but this is a typical sheet right there they have sci-fi stuff fantasy stuff you name it there's everything under the sun you know, here's a okay this is that same same texture sheet that you see over here and of course then we also have uh, well here's the Egyptian themed one so you can see the lovely Egyptian theme on that and then of course we have all the 3d printed bits uh, most of these from make it epic basing like the columns and the jugs and all that good stuff and then we've got these uh, trees right here and the ferns all that good stuff that is from make it epic basing where's my ah, it's the other side of my brush here let's get the dark down there real quick guess we should do some over here yeah same on that side same over here we just need some of our darks in place must have dark to show the light especially when there's object source lighting <laughs> I don't know am I gonna have to do a new book of wapple on that one and again oh that's right armored wolf has done some of the initial book of wapple stickers uh, taken I think the first uh, some six chapters some of the the favorites and they looked really nifty as files they look really sensational as stickers so those are gonna be fantastic oh what the heck we'll let that be a little darker too all right so now we've got some of our dark in now let's uh, go back over here and start to play around with some more light some more light brilliant yellow pale into some of our fluorescent yellow here a little bit more here I'm actually gonna take my thinner and drop that right onto the yellow yeah Ranzarok I over these several Reaper cons that I was at we had a chance to hang out especially in the uh, after ReaperCon time frame and then he would be up here for at Adepticon and we would hang out then as well so I actually have known him for a long time and I unfortunately when we got the news that is when things were kind of going south here we also had the well there was supposed to be a treatment it ended up being a transfusion instead uh, this was uh, this was actually supposed to be painted last night but again last night was uh, we were in kind of full-on crisis mode so we're, we're doing it tonight and uh, trying to pay tribute to Ed of course and of course that's Ed from from Reaper miniatures who did all kinds of really amazing things for the industry 
and was always really, 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 really nice to us for years and years. So here, all I'm trying to do is just start to feel, okay, where do we want some of this lightest stuff to go? That had just too much thinner in it. No big deal. I'm going to grab, ah, I think we'll use this instead. Also, start to spread this around our wall here. Don't want to go too light too quick. Well, yeah, yeah Ranzarok, uh, well, part of it is we learned uh, a fun fact that would have been really nice to know months ago that, of course, we had to discover on our own and months after the fact. Had we known this was a possibility months ago, we could have at least known what the heck was going on instead of people telling us, oh, yeah, you didn't know that happened. Ah, uh, Vic, yeah, they were the most, uh, and this was pre-Bones. This was even uh, pre-Bones. Obviously, once they became Bones, then th there was even more affordabil affordability kind of built in there. But I can remember years ago getting the old, uh, was it, Julie Guthrie type sculpts and uh, oh, the old Werner, Cl oh, Werner clock like this. This is a Werner clock sculpt right here. Holy smokes. Yeah, what, what am I doing? It's an old timey. It's an old timey sculpt here. Now I I think you can still see some of this back here. Hey there, Crazy Wolf. Thank you so much for that sub. I also don't mind having a sip along right with that. Thank you so much, Crazy Wolf. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Ah, that is nice. Yeah, let's throw some of this light down here on our little skelly friends. Yeah, those are from Make It Epic. Something tells me that these torches, though, these are actually from Goon Master Games. Something like that. Ah, so the Saurian is also the... Oh, the... Uh, the oh, whatchamacallit? The, the Raptor stuff. Yeah, well, Warlord, that's right. He did sculpt a heck of a lot of that stuff, didn't he? If not all of it. I don't know if he sculpted every single one, but he sure sculpted a lot of it. So thank you so much, Crazy Wolf. I hope that you had yourself a decent Friday. Well, maybe maybe a really good Friday. I don't know. It could have been. Could have been a good Friday for a lot of folks. We're hoping that tomorrow sort of continues uh, where we were today. That would be very helpful on well pretty much every single level and especially since maybe we have an idea of what the heck was going on maybe now we might be able to get some kind of a handle on this thing now uh, I'm gonna just take the orange down here don't want to do too much again and that, that floor just has the most amazing texture to it. Now, of course, this is kind of on the shinier side. Which is the, the case, right? It has uh, a lot of the thinner in there. But it's going to set quicker, which means it starts to turn into a... Uh, what almost looks like dried paint. Pretty darn quick. All right, so now we're starting to get some of our light back here. We're going to let that alone. I'm going to go back over here now and start to fool around with that area. Let's see what we can do here. We'll just take some of our... Right here. Maybe, you know what? Okay, maybe we'll do... Ooh, this is... I uh, haven't done this in a while, just to widen the indigo. Do something like that. Start to maybe think about some lighter stuff in the armor here. And then we'll come back. We gotta throw some, some skin tones on here as well, just to have something that's going to contrast with all of the armor colors. Let's try this, see what this does. 
Terra Rosa, maybe? Eh, why not? Might even use a little bit of the Radiant Violet here. We just uh, don't want to have the blue skin here on the face. And I think uh, there, and then the feet also, the hands. Okay, I'm going to throw some more light here, and then we'll guess what? We're going to start coming back with some of our darks again. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Some darks. Now, we'll, yeah, we're going to keep finding some nifty little areas here where we can think about reflections, all that good. See all those edges start to stand out? They really weren't before, were they? Now well, they sure as heck are now. Bam. And all I have to do then is just take my blending brush and then just work some of these out. Right here, we can use, use a, a, like a micro blending brush here. There you are. Yeah, Velfira, there's something about your body that just doesn't want you to have that second foot. So Valfira, yeah, that it, it just it kind of seems like the universe really only wants each of us to have one operational foot. I don't know, maybe maybe they're just trying to tell us something. I don't know, but I would I would not uh, put it past a a vast conspiracy to make sure that you and I only had one operational foot each. Now, do we? Oh, almost forgot these. Almost forgot this stuff here. The chain mail. So, Sarge, we got ourselves a whole bunch of classic Reaper miniatures. A bunch of classics. Oh, and Sarge, I also printed out those tiny palm trees. They're small. They're really small, but they're actually, I think they're actually going to be the right size. I was just taking kind of an educated guess as to what was going to work scale-wise for Armada for making those atolls. But I think it's going to work. Oh, look at that, huh? Does it need to be difficult? I think not. I definitely think not. Now that we're starting to get the lights here, now we almost start going back there. However, we want to let that set for as long as we can. So we're going to keep playing around over here. Like so. So Sarge, I hope that you had something really tasty to eat. Some some nice vittles. Now, <clears throat> we'll be painting one of these other ones here. I might again it depends when we start tomorrow if it's an earlier start time tomorrow maybe we'll do this one here so again these are the egyptian columns here uh this is actually a metal reaper figure and then we've got some of these uh, fabulous jugs and other things yeah Valfera. uh right now of course the machine is is put away <clears throat> but I, I i showed those to kathy and i don't think she was uh she wasn't here when we were talking about those bags and she said oh and then she as she looked at him she started thinking oh, okay that's what those are for so we'll uh we'll certainly uh, well first we'll see if they're gonna measure up to the size there and then we'll see if we can uh, get those things working so thank you very much for those i think there was what four or was it five of them it was either four or five of them so much appreciated. Uh, I think for sure, and I think uh, remember Velfair, we were talking about doing those uh, those chicken pieces there in the uh, slow cooker. So I think that's going to be the next thing we do. Now uh, a little bit of a turkey sandwich there. Now speaking of foods, speaking of foods, Armored Wolf was very kind. He he was he got a blow by blow report of everything that was going on last night, and he was he very kindly sent a a Giordano's Mitsa over here, so we want to say thank you to Armored Wolf for sending the Mitsa this way. Uh, Armored Wolf, I counted seven different meats on the Mitsa. That now that that is the way to do pizza right there. 
there's no such thing as too much meat on a pizza. <clears throat> it, was, it was basically, uh, I think the only meat that was missing on there was venison. Who knows, maybe that's an option that they start to offer at some point. So that I think, uh, yeah, that's about the only other major meat that I think they were kind of missing on there was some venison. Yeah, so, uh, boy, Wilfred, I wish I could uh, give you even a hint at what the size is. Uh, the only thing I can say is, holy smokes, it's huge. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's what size it is to me, is holy smokes, it's ginormous. So that, that gives you a very clear perspective on just the exact precise size of it, <laughs> for sure. Right, that like, yeah, it's huge, but it's, it is ginormous, oh my gosh. Now we're going to try and get some lighter colors on the skin tones here. And again, thanks everybody for all the subs and the bitses and the cheers. Obviously not being able to stream last night, that kind of, uh, well, you know how Twitch is. They, they want you to stream 24 hours a day, 18 days a week, and 75 days a month continuously. Otherwise they punish you. So we appreciate that. Um, so the, thank, thanks so much for leaving the, the dead fishies off of there. Now me, I've actually had a, well, I guess what would qualify as a hamburger pizza. I mean, I again, it's another meat, so more meat's more better. I'm not, not quite sure how Kathy would feel about that. But we do have ourselves an insomnia night. Hey, insomnia night, nice to see you back. I hope that you had yourself a, a nice Friday. And, well, here's hoping that maybe you got, uh, as always, right, I always ask you, do you have some RPG stuff planned for the weekend? Hey, Valfira, if you wanted to share your fabulous uh, nurse there with all the incredible lighting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, sorry, if I thought I mentioned that already, but if I neglect it, I apologize and... If you wanted to share that, I'm sure people would really get a kick out of seeing it, for sure. Uh, I think we're all caught up, right? I think we're all caught up. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be going back into this with some dark. You can see it's already getting less shiny. And look at that! Remember how shiny that was before? See how not shiny it is now. Uh, yeah, Sarge, the, uh, well, <laughs> there's a, uh, of course, all I can think of, you know, making these atolls is uh, I have to have one that looks like Iwo Jima and just see who recognizes it, right? I'll have to have, oh, it'll have to have black sand. Yeah, Sarge, it'll have to have black sand on it. It'll have to have, uh, well, We'll just say the other, not, we won't use the marine name for it. We'll just call it the Mount Suribachi. All right, well, Valfair, ooh, well, Valfair, ooh, look at this. Wait, 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 don't go anywhere just yet. Don't go anywhere just yet because Film Noir is here. Wow, look at that. I mean... This is going to make such a huge... I mean, there's a decent amount of lighting already here. But this really is the piece of resistance, otherwise known as the piece de resistance. Look at that. Big difference, right? The cool and then the warm. And the warm is going to get hotter, and it's also going to get lighter there. Uh, old Grand Oracle says there's some Hobbit STLs from Last Sword. Well, that's, it's funny, Grand Oracle... Because a day that ends in Y is a day that I get asked, have I finally jumped on the last sword? Uh, because they make really good stuff, don't they? Really fantastic stuff. So, uh, I don't know, Grand Oracle, if, uh, if you could maybe send me a reminder to look at that. Because uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, as long as they're good files, right? Uh, they can work in our Lord of the Rings stuff. Heck, those my mini factory... Or sorry, not my mini factory. The uh, the files from Mini Monster Mayhem. 
I mean, they don't do Lord of the Rings stuff, yet they worked pretty darn good, didn't they? Uh, now, I know <laughs> it's kind of funny, Grand Oracle, right now, Highland Miniatures is in their uh, dwarf. Well, this is like this is like five months in a row of dwarves. Uh, I have all of the Empire stuff. Oh, eh, that's the thing we need to send uh, Lamaness's way is the steam tank. Not that it's all that big. There's just so many darn pieces to it that it would take me a week and a half just to print that darn thing out. Uh, Sarge, actually, uh, we, I had that. Yes, I used to have the black lava paste. I remember now. Uh, well, I think it ran out kind of quick because I liked it. It was a favorite. That was kind of a neat one. I definitely like that. Dwarves upon Dwarves. So Grand Oracle, I actually... I don't know if you saw back in the day, but I did use Highland Miniatures, basically Army of the Dead. I don't think he's done the horsies yet. I don't think he's done the horsies yet, but I did use uh, Highland Miniatures for Armor Army of the Dead already. Uh, I think we're almost caught up. Yeah, I think we're caught up now. Here, let me just get some more. Ah, I'm just going to do a pin line wash of this here. The heck with it. Save some time. All right, that's a little better there. Uh, so Grand Oracle, of course, well, we use the uh, the Empire Knights. I do have a couple of those Griffin Riders that are actually prepped. I just have to put them on bases. Like, I meant to make them part of the latest basing video, but they just uh, wasn't able to do that. All right, let me see if I can't go even... Start to put some even lighter elements in here. Let's see if we can do this. There's my brilliant yellow pale. I mean, uh, they're, they're nice. Uh, the Highland Miniatures dwarves, they certainly really have that, that uh, fantasy, Warhammer fantasy dwarf vibe to them, no doubt about it. Uh, actually, the other thing that I did print out some of, and I want to print out, well, the rest of them, uh, the the ogres, right? Because he has the ogre gunners and all that kind of stuff. I have some of those printed out. I would like to print out some more. Uh, skin tones would be fun. Uh, some basing, I think, could also be fun, too. Let me see if we can start to get something... Uh, Lighter against the stones. Especially right up here against it. And you can see we're kind of doing a little bit of a stippling type of a deal here. Something like that. And then we'll just let that set there. And then we'll uh, kind of fade that out once it's had a chance to set. But first, we need to get some of our light back here. Maybe even a little bit more up there. And again, I'm just going to uh, get back to that sort of stippling type of brush stroke. A little bit more of just the orange here. Something like that. And then let me see if we can find a blending brush here. Something like this. Soft brush, no paint on it. A little bit of tap, 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 or typical Morse code that we like to do here. And some more over here now. So I, I would like to, on well, this stream, well, let's say I'm hoping to be able to do my my Friday and Saturday and Monday streams. They'll all be Reaper miniatures. We'll continue the Reaper miniature thing. Like I said, depending on when we start tomorrow, I think this will be our Reaper miniature for tomorrow. If I'm on the the podcast for uh, 
whatchamacallit there for more than dice on Sunday. We'll try and do a Reaper miniature then also. Where's my torch? So this is where our lightest orange should go. Like so. Oh, by the way, this is 44 minutes in. Yeah. This, this is 40, 44 minutes ago. This was primer just like all those other ones I keep showing you. That's the power of the oils. That's the power of working just globally on the entire miniature all at once. Not just one tiny part of it. And then the oils uh, just letting you do all that super easy. Plop a color down on there and then just start blending it around. Uh, so Rico, definitely say hi to mom for me, of course. Sorry if I, if I neglected to do that. You, you neglect to say hello to your mom at your own peril. So uh, <laughs> we, we want to rectify that. I don't remember saying hello to mom intentionally there. You you never just ignore your mom like that. That's a that's a bad idea. Oh, actually, <laughs> recoil. Someone was kind enough to send virtually every single and this this box arrived via Australian post. I kid you not. It had every form of Tim Tam in there. There was dark chocolate raspberry Tim Tams. There was dark chocolate mint Tim Tams. There was white chocolate Tim Tams. Three different kinds of caramel Tim Tams. Because, well, Tim Tams are the greatest. Ah, she's watching in the room. Oh, then she says hello. So, yes, Tim Tams, the most glorious, glorious, glorious thing ever. My goodness, yes. There was, I think, at least 10 different varieties that were sent this way. I just, I didn't realize that they made any dark chocolate ones, much less at, at least five different varieties of dark chocolate Tim Tams. And if anybody does not, has never tasted any Tim Tams, you Google that and you find yourself a way to get some, no matter where you live on this planet because they are fantastic oh and the Tim Tam slam that's right why well, I guess we have the supplies for that don't we recoil uh, <laughs> we don't have a shortage of them right now ten different types for each season well that that's a that's a good start Ten different types for each season. It's good. It's a good starting point. Because again, can you actually have too many varieties of Tim Tams? Some might say you could. Just like this is a pro Pluto household, this is also a, as you might guess, a pro Tim Tam household. Now let's get a little bit of our orange reflected onto the hair. Some of this on the chain mail back here. Um, uh, again, it's, uh, that's 47 minutes in. Uh, you know what? I will just let that here a little bit lighter. Now the sword. Even more intense orange here. It's actually a little bit darker than what's already there. I hope that the I know you've been working on the Tyranids there. I hope that those are going well. Ah, yeah. Maybe we'll lighten this up a little bit more in there. Eh, I don't know. Don't know. Nah, boy, Doji, uh, I know yeah, I've talked a couple of times about really wanting to get back to the the old Saturday challenges, right? Where I've got a dozen miniatures, I don't know, maybe 15 miniatures or something like that. And we just blast away at those things for 8, 10, 12 hours or so just to see how many we can get done. 
I think you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of basing videos actually uh, over the next month here. Mostly because there's a bunch of things I need to get prepped and based. And it's either me just doing them really quickly where nobody can see them and then nobody benefits, nobody learns anything. Or I just do them as videos. Uh, well, Thranuel, glad that you could join us here. Uh, again, Thranuel, oh, I don't know if you saw, got the alert for the uh, the tutorial video for this that went up, I want to say, only a few hours ago. Oh, thanks, Thranuel. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, Thranuel, I can try and shoot you a private message with uh, some, some details about what's going on. Because, uh, well, you would obviously have a little, some, some insight there into when I say these things, you go, oh my goodness. So, yeah, I'll uh, try and shoot you a little bit of a private message update there. As we darken this down a little bit more again, that, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. So Grand Oracle, it kind of depends uh, if, if I can actually get them to get me the files. Now, I do have their dwarves. I do have their dwarves. I also have uh, Grand Oracle. Oh, geez, maybe you didn't hear that. I actually printed out a whole bunch of Eldar figures. Yeah, a bunch of Eldar figures. I also still have... Where did my sisters of battle go? Oh. I still have some more of the Sisters of Battle, including the Penitent Engine left. Uh, I also have printed out some Space Marines. I also uh, have some, like, Custodes jet bikes. And I have actually been purchasing... Well, here, just... Uh, okay, so, you know, all these bits are Make It Epic. I have a few sci-fi ones. I think I've got five, four or five... There's a couple of more that I want to get and print those out so that we can start using the uh, Make It Epic stuff to do sci-fi bases. Because I've already done sci-fi bases with Plastic Heart and, and what is that other stuff? Um, the polystyrene tubing. I've done a bunch of those. But now I want to break out things like, the, remember the triple hex roller? Uh, okay, Sarge. Well, thank you so much, Sarge. Actually, I'll shoot you a message. Oh, and thanks for sending the memes. Not memes. The, uh, oh, the, the, the hilarious TikTok videos. Sarge, that was uh, the last 48 hours especially. Really, the last 72 has been not fantastic. So we really appreciate that. And I'll uh, just shoot you a message kind of filling you in. Yeah, Thranuel, uh, well, yeah, I think you saw that I've got those uh, PBO paints in, or Pabeo. Uh, I think I'll use those in a Dark Sword video, because that's typically where I try out new and crazy paints, just to see what the heck's going to happen. So you can see we're starting to throw a few little darks in here, right? Yeah, Grand Oracle, uh, if it wasn't for all of the stuff that, well, basically, you know, that started in May... There was a whole... I was going to do... Well... This was going to be an entire army. Seriously. That was gonna, I was going to try and do that on vehicles. I was going to try and do that on other... Uh, other Like regular marines and such. That was, that was all part of the plan after Adepticon. Yeah, Doji, just kind of the update there is that unfortunately the... It would seem that the primary anti-inflammation medicine maybe has stopped working, which is uh, something we found out today is something that can happen. So that uh, we would have liked to have known that many months ago when it started so that we could have been looking out for this kind of thing instead of just wondering what the heck was going on. Um... Yeah, that's a little bit of our uh, blendy brush there. Yeah, something like that. 
I'll get more reflected light in that area as well. When it comes time... Hey, this mechanic games, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Eight months, there we go. Uh, thank you so much, this mechanic games, I appreciate that. Let's see, what was the other... Uh, let's see, I also have some uh, Necron vehicles. Not 3D printed ones. These are actually things like, uh, they're not the flying croissants. They're the, well, kind of the transport. Was that the Ark or something like that? Uh, I think I have one of those. So there are some things that we can do moving forward. So I just want to get some dark there. Let's see if we can't sharpen up that edge even a little bit more here. Ah, there we go little sharper so everybody please uh, check out this mechanic games oh and doji if you wanted to share to share your recent stuff there in the chat oh, i'm sure that would be fabulous oh look at this see we're not just going to get a harder edge there but now we're starting to say it's it's maybe reflecting some other things that are in this well kind of dank dungeon right we need to we need to tone this down as much as possible so that this is, is brighter than our our ambient light thank you so much armored wolf for posting the link to the patreon page again we we just posted our latest video there a little smidge of our white there and I think I might just do something like this on the cloth right here. We'll just go with something like a uh, some kind of a violet here. So uh, we'll take some of the radiant violet and mix that with our violet. I'll lighten this up slightly. I don't want to lighten that up too much. Again, it's kind of in shadow anyways. I think we already have a whole bunch of thin paint on it. Let me see what happens with the stickers. Ah, oh, look at that. See that? The thick paint sticks to thinner paint and vice versa. Yeah, Kago, that's a, it's not an easy thing to do to keep a, a photographic catalog of everything. No doubt about it. I still have a whole bunch of miniatures that we painted on the stream and in videos that actually have to get their their flock and such on them so that uh, I can actually take a bunch of pictures and then finally show those. We've got, I'm going to take some of the Van Dyke Brown, some of the Indian Yellow here, and we're going to change that sword hilt. So yeah, there's an awful lot of photos that I've got to do, for sure. Now also, too, uh, printing-wise, we are testing out for the very first time the Soraya Simple Gray. Not, it's not the smoky black, it's not the clear, it is, uh, it is gray. It's the first opaque one that uh, I've ever seen him do, so we're, uh, we're going to find out if, it's, if it helps in the areas where I think it might. Now, let me get back to my fast matte white here. Let's, there's some thinner in that. And I still think there are some uh, highlights that we can do here, or we just have to go back with some of our darker stuff. We'll find out here first. Highlights here on the R. Yeah, I think we can still go back with some of our dark stuff, but yeah, we actually, uh, that's even lighter than I expected it to be. And of course, we could put some orange out here too. First of all, you know, color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere, but like we were showing that one figure of the Nazgul, there could be other torches here too. Uh, that's what we're doing here. So I might actually still be putting some more torch light on the rest of this miniature here. Don't be surprised. Go 
going with a little bit more of our light here. It's uh, it is really wild painting this old old classic Reaper miniature with the oils. I I think I've painted this particular miniature. Oh my god. Oh, I think what did they call these things? They actually had a name. Uh, was it the Gwen something? Uh, they weren't Valkyries or anything. I forget. I can't remember the name now. But we've painted a bunch of these things over the years, that's for sure. i try and find me a little bit more of my light highlights there. Maybe a little more reflective light there. I don't know, but that also needs to be taken away from the skin color that's there. Let's probably lighten this up. These are some pretty old casts right here. I mean, they they do show their age. Yvonne, that's it. These were all, they were all called, it was like Gothmog. It's like everybody is Gothmog, these are all Yvonne. And every single one of them was called Yvonne. And there was different ones. All right, Varro Beat, well, thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate that. And I hope that you have a really good Saturday. Hope, hopefully, maybe we actually see you on the Saturday stream. Ah, there we go. Now we've got some. We got some eyes here now. Ah, now did you do both of them land dressed? <clears throat> Was it the uh, the mounted and the unmounted? And of course. Uh, I've seen some reviews of it, and I know someone was saying that the the mounted Gothmog it's a little bit tricksy getting them onto the warg. I mean, obviously, I'll just use some green stuff, but he's plastic, so it shouldn't be that difficult. Ah, so he has a lantern, so a little bit of object source lighting. Yeah, land dressed. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, you gotta have the sword. I mean, I guess the club is okay, but definitely we'll be doing the sword option when we when we get to assemble him. Where did my landing brush go? Again, no need to do layers, right? Hashtag no layers. We're just gonna take this little bit of a blending brush here, and we spread that out nicely. Yeah, Landris, I don't know what the... I wasn't quite sure what the problem was the person was having. I don't know what it was, but... Uh, I don't think we'll have that issue here. Whatever issue they were having. Now, he just goes on a... F uh, the, the, the warg, right? He, and his warg, he's just on a 40 millimeter base, right, uh, right Landris? Here, we're going to get some of our... Indigo. Oh, and everybody, please give M Tellies a follow also. So, M Tellies, if you wanted to uh, show off, of course, uh, you know, when you're going to be at the local game castle showing off the, the Meta Zoo, please, uh, let everybody know about that. Now, Landrest, uh, it's been a while since I've seen the pictures. The warg is not actually on any kind of that pre-sculpted terrain, is he? Is he just kind of walking around flat because then we could obviously get a chance to do something really fun for the base? Uh, let me see. No, no, no. no. I'm going to go. Wow, that's going to be interesting. We're going to actually almost go a little bit violet here with some of our reflected light. Hmm, you know what, I'm going to take some of this here green, radiant green, because, well, naturally. Yeah, it's kind of wild land dress, especially given that, oh, I don't know, if, is it Madrill or Damrod that has the 
the sculpted stuff on his base. Hmm. This will steal a little bit of the fast matte white here. Looking to do so, the rivets there, and a little chain of lights here. Where's my blending brush? Well, there you are. Let's see, we'll just tone that down, cut the edge down a little bit. Uh, I'll see, so Faramir, he kind of is leaning forward, wouldn't you say, there? Landrast. Again, looking forward to. Uh, uh, well, I was thinking of uh, also to doing some of the Rangers and the Gondolorians as uh, some Patreon videos. Probably is it another army painting series to show some. Uh, We've never really done an army with two different color schemes in the same army. So uh, that's not something I've covered before, and that kind of intrigued me. And then, of course, well, some city basing. See if there's a maybe even a way we could incorporate some pink foam into that somehow. Now, he's, <coughs> he's on some tactical rocks that... Tactical rocks, there you go. Can't go wrong with tactical or tactical skulls, right, Landrast? Not thranual, it's uh, what you, you don't want to have too much linseed oil. So, just if you're going to go lean in one direction, it's, it's usually best to have less linseed oil. And you can always add more while you're painting or. Uh, more thinner, something like that. So yeah, just uh, when it comes to the linseed oil, a little bit less of it seems to always be the best way to go. And thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for posting the treatment fun link. The That is something that we still... I know it's all green here, but with all these continued surprises, uh, especially with the new year coming up, that's also going to... Uh, we might uh, start that one up again in January because there will be a whole host of brand new expenses for that. But we appreciate everyone that's helped us kind of get through, well, 2022 so far. Tactical skull. I think we had some tact. Ah, oh, there's, uh, yeah, there's tactical skulls. Look at that, tactical skulls right there. So actually, uh, Landris, I might just have to start calling them tactical skulls instead of skelly friends. Because then we have, you know, skelly friends indicate more of a complete skelly. So I think we're going to have to start calling them tactical skulls instead. I'm going to go to my blending brush again there. And that just got a little bit too much. So yeah, that, uh, that is going to be uh, very troublesome again very soon unfortunately and since this misadventure is really just kind of it's unfortunately still in the beginning stages not the middle or the end that's for sure all right so i think yeah we might put some uh, some darker cracks in there too what i would like to do is still sneak in some orange down here let's see if we can do this here there. Now, out here, again, it's not, not like this torch is going to be reflecting stuff out here, but we want almost like there's other torches out here. Potentially, maybe reflect a little bit of light onto the armor here. Just little bits and pieces of it. That's all, just little touches like that. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Oh, do we? Uh, let's let that just work its way. And now here we still can't actually, believe it or not, go even lighter with their flame colors here. We'll take some of our fast matte and some of our fluorescent. It's fast fluorescent now. Ah, 
Yeah, so you can still get even lighter there. Uh, so MTO is again, uh, if you wanted to, because uh, actually remember the last stream you mentioned the game castle out there. Oh, because you had the sales. That's right. You had the sales on the uh, return, or sorry, the uh, battle for us Gilead set. So if you wanted to shout out the the game castle that you do a lot of your stuff at. Sorry, I forgot to spit that out earlier. All right, now I'm going to find a couple little areas here of extra light right close to the torches here. Yeah, I will just for the heck of it here. The lights there, more along the edge. I was thinking we needed thicker paint there, but I guess we had to go a little bit thinner. No big deal. Speaking of some cracks here, ah, while well, I've got the lighter stuff, we'll try that first. And then we can maybe do the darker ends of that later, but yeah, that's a little uh, crack in the stone there. Ah, uh, the Black Friday sale. Now, of course, uh, sadly, <laughs> I mean, it's to be expected, right? The uh, nifty little Black Friday sale for the uh, Soraya resins, that's over. I mean, there's, I think it's probably just their kind of regular discounts now. So here's hoping that they maybe have another one of those uh, over the holiday season. But I think on Amazon it is $30. It's maybe $0.50 cents more, the gray versus the smoky black. The smoky black is the cheapest one. I'm really interested to see. It's one of the first things I think I'm going to try and do is head, head down there and see uh, how did that print turn out. All right, so we've had a, uh, a little more light on our tactical skulls. Is uh, <laughs> I think that's what we should call them, Landras, from now on. Is because uh, Skelly friends would have to be the whole. Oh, uh, where did he go? Uh, is he around here somewhere? No, that's not him. I think we'll have to. Are these? Yeah, see, those are more Skelly friends right there. Those are more skilly friends, not so much tactical skulls like these guys here. So uh, <laughs> that's what we're going to have to do from now on. Skelly beans. Actually, you know what, uh, Raven Cat, that sounds like it would be a really fun Halloween candy. Uh, sort of like, you know how they make gummy bears and gummy snakes, all the weird gummy monsters and stuff? That, that that sounds like that's something that somebody has to make. So thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for posting a link to the Patreon page. Again, following up on a lot of these basing videos, like the Conquest basing and prep videos led to some mini-series of Conquest figures, just like the Dark Sword thing was the same way. So this is going to be the very soon, probably the next tutorial that I film. Uh, probably on Sunday, I'll film that, and that's going to be the first one with a cast shadow in it. I'm uh, really looking forward to that, actually. Love me some cast shadow. Now here we need to cast some highlights there. However, I had to let that paint set. Same over here, right on this edge. We're going to go lighter than that. But as uh, always, we had to wait for that paint to set just a smidge here. Yeah, look at that. See how much uh, lighter we can do. Now, what I will do also is I'm going to come at this from the other side here. And we're just going to sharpen up that edge. Some dark uh, indigo, a little bit of the Van Dyke brown 
and I think I uh, might actually have a little bit of a brush here on there or something. Yeah, I'm just going to have to do that a little bit more aggressively. Actually, I might even just do this. Yeah. We're just going to... Uh, I'm just going to wipe all that stuff out so that I can get the stupid brush here off of there. This is, uh, this is the beauty of the oils, right? Very easy to make that change. No problem whatsoever. I could also... You know, do some uh, makeup sponge there. Take some paint off that way. There's always uh, always options when it comes to the oil paints. You're not stuck with something that you don't like. Again, it was very easy to make that change. Now this has this is really thick right here, and that was the way to go. Yeah. And also, I'm going to take my sponge there and finally, I think, got rid of that, whatever that was. Whatever fuzz that was on the brush or the miniature there, that's now gone. And then I can start to restore some of my really uh, bright orange here. That's a little better. And that's a, a very toasty on that thord right there. Uh, let's see, so in that Black Friday sale, there's a bunch of kits 75% uh, off. I think, didn't you have 25% off the uh, GW, a lot of the GW kits there? Or was it even up to 35? I know there was at least, I know there was 15 to 25, which that can be a lot. Um, so there's uh we can have a little bit of our light over here uh, the since the torches are up here not much actually I do have to get some uh, just ambient light back here so here let's let's do that before we forget thanks for reminding me there uh, we'll just use this here filbert brush let's make a radiant gray our green our violet there's a radiant gray for you. There's still, as you can see, there's still a workable pre-glaze on there. That's still, well, look at that, see that? <laughs> I think of how many times with the acrylics where I would have loved to do something like that. Wouldn't possible. Here again, we'll just, uh, look at all that darker color that's getting on the end of that brush there. Look at this. Because that just would have looked like, well, nasty old dry brushing if that were acrylics, because all this stuff would be, well, dry. This is not. Yeah, it looks like it's dry, but that pre-glaze there is still wet, because look at that. See all that dark paint on the end of the brush? That would be the pre-glaze, which we put on there over two hours ago. Hey there, surface tension. How you doing? So, uh... Ah, so 25 to 70 parts, that's, that is massive there, m -tellies. So everybody, please give surface tension painting a follow. Yeah, surface tension, uh, we did a whole bunch of basing in a video, and we did seven of these, seven miniatures here. This is the first one of them. We've got another one that we'll paint tomorrow night. This is what we're planning on painting tomorrow. Uh, that one did not have object source lighting on it. Now, let me... See. I'm probably going to have to throw some darks down there to clean that edge up just a little bit. So here are the torches up here. What if we were to do something... Like that. So see the torch is coming down. Shadow here. Light here. Let's do a shadow side over here now. Ooh, speaking of 
All right, so we need some over here. Where's my, there you go. Right through there. Art of Michael, well, that, uh, that really, it can happen, right? You just, you want something that you can really settle for, and uh, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. Now, of course, when I was reading Surface Tension thing, for whatever reason, I read that as Spanking the Ganja, which that is a whole different type of show right there. I think that's more of an OnlyFans type of a thing. Now, here, let's get some... Almost a bit of a horizon line right there. Let's maybe darken on the top of this with the Prussian blue. Well, with whatever junk is also on the brush. Any more of our orange were floating over there? Maybe, maybe not. That's uh Yeah, era, that's uh <laughs> that's a whole different version. That's the uh not safe for work version of the silly Marillion, I guess. Yeah, that one's uh rated M A or something like that, rated M. Because normally the Silly Marillion is more of a rated uh, G type of thing. Now, uh, and the, oh, it's Steeler, right? She has Twitch clothes for miniatures that have uh, a little bit more of the miniature showing than Twitch wants it to be. I don't know if I don't think there's technology. That would be hilarious because you know people use those filters when they're doing role playing stuff, right? And they'll be on screen, but they have that filter on their face that kind of gives them a whole different face. I wonder if you could do filters to just have uh, cover up the nasty bits or something like that, so that we can actually paint miniatures. So recoil says that. <laughs> Recoil says that this uh, channel should be rated G for Gothmog, because everyone is Gothmog. Actually, who was... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. This was uh, this was Galmog right here. Yeah, that was Galmog. The One can never have too many Gothmogs. Of course... Uh, well, we we obviously have the Gothmog from the starter set showing up, but we also need... Oh, actually, somebody's doing... Uh, I think it's Monster Mini Mayhem. The same release as their Troll one. They have something that kind of looks like a Balrog, just minus the wings. Maybe, uh, maybe that's... We could paint a wingless Balrog. A flightless Balrog. Any more? This thing, There's. we have some mid-tone and we have some light. We just needed some dark there. Just needed some there. Of course, uh, well, now that we're doing the Army of the Dead, that's right. I have to get more Corsairs done so that we can have uh, our battle for Middle Earth at sea. And then we'll have to make our terrain, of course. We'll have to make some ships, 28 millimeter scale, so that we can have uh, Gondor and Umbar duking it out at sea. We could always do a. Uh, we always could could modify the armada rules because we don't have enough variety of Middle Earth games and stuff. You know, we have War of the Ring. We have to make up more, which means we also have to make up our own uh, War in Middle Earth at sea and add that to the campaign because, of course. Uh, so, Danimals, you're having some fun painting up Fairmere and Friends. It was kind of hilarious because 
This was only, I don't know, maybe a few weeks before they showed what the new ones looked like. This is one of the old metal figures, and I based this and we painted this on stream, and then, then I saw what you know, Madril, Damrod, and Faramir all looked like, and the kind of bases they had for him, and I just thought, that is hilarious. That right there is one of the broken stoneworks pieces. Oh yeah, Art of Michael, it's definitely in print. Now, the new starter set, I have to say, I just found this out, it has all of the FAQ stuff from the last year or two in there now it's not highlighted or anything like that but all of the FAQ is included in the reprint of the rule book uh, so Art and Michael they've uh, they redid the rule book I want to say about two and a half years ago now ish something like that and they've done all of those campaign books uh, Gondor at War or uh, War in Rohan I think it was as we had some more dark, some more cracks over here. Uh, the new one, Defense of the North. So, and of course, uh, there was the Hobbit one. There's also a Hobbit rule book with all the profiles in there. Uh, now, Armored Wolf. Uh, but I'm, I'm really anxious also, too, to see the see the terrain I just have to decide do we make one or two big pieces out of it or do I try to make several small pieces do I try and find a way to maybe make some foam parts for it so that we can take those pieces and expand on them and use those pieces to uh, create something larger So yeah, that's uh, Danimals. Uh, that was something that I was really looking forward to doing because it's not just uh, at sea, right? You know, along the coast, fighting Dol Amroth and everything. But there's uh, well, there's a river that goes up to Pelagir. There's also a river that goes up to Osgiliath. There's you know the fords of Isen. So there's plenty of rivers. Or you could also be fighting there too. And uh, I don't know what turnip 28 is. So, yeah, uh, Armored Wolf, I'm looking forward to the. Uh, see, what maybe we do with some rubble inside? How do we make that rubble playable on the inside? I thought that could make an interesting tutorial. Because, oh, remember we did the Rohan buildings? And uh, we had to kind of figure out, all right, just how much... There's uh, So there's our two ruined buildings, right? But uh, there you go. Now here's the painted one. So you can see there's not too much rubble on the inside of the building. Obviously, you would have tons of rubble on the inside. But if you want to have guys inside the building, yeah, maybe you just kind of don't do the rubble on the inside. That is one of those, uh, that's just kind of one of those things where you have to decide, is it worth it to have the realism, but maybe it kind of uh, takes a little bit away from playability. Uh, actually, hey, Bithron, on some of your, especially your, well, your Gondor terrain, but then your... Uh, Flames of War terrain. I wasn't sure if you had rubble on the inside of that. Now, well, Thranuel, don't blink, right? Oh, we actually have that cookie here. Now, of course, ooh, uh, I have to figure out where... I had one of her eyes somewhere, but see, this is what happens when you blink. You can't see anything. <laughs> That's, don't blink. Uh, I guess the other thing, too, is that much like that one, uh, well, the Rohan building from the set, uh, we can use that for some scale. All of our Rohan buildings were based off of the scale set by that first one. Now, see, we got that big old blob right there. 
Let's see if I can't find me a micro blending brush. Maybe this one here. So that's uh that sounds like it has lots of elements there. Uh, so a surface tension, can we expect a Kickstarter campaign on that then maybe later on in the year? So maybe between now and January 1st, you know, just throw it together. It's not like a Kickstarter campaign takes that much time to arrange. Not at all. Again, just taking the blending brush to this and... There we go. See, they went from a, a weird blob to all of a sudden it's very much integrated now into the armor. Pretty much just the uh, floral orange at this stage. Do some more. Uh, mine is that piece of fuzz. I saw that on the brush there. A smidge of our orange weather again this is a uh, more torches maybe out here not this torch is but torch is out there somewhere ah so it already exists yeah Mithron, uh it's funny because I, I do see every so often, uh, as we're, can we add some of orange out there? I will see some Instagram things or ads or whatever that pop up for this, the 3D printed terrain. Stuff that would obviously work well for things like Osculeth. I already have a bunch of that stuff, so I would really love to be able to paint some of that. They're pretty big pieces. I mean, as in potentially two and a half feet tall or something. But we will have to do an Osgiliath painted backdrop. That should be fun. Now, over here, I think I need to still throw some more darks in that. Now, let me, let me see what happens if I can get a, a decent light... right down in there I think there's a little radiant yellow and maybe a little more of the radiant yellow in that Ooh, that might have been too thin but I'll give this a shot here see what happens uh, oh and now bits run uh, was it going to be modular I guess that's the next question All right so you could have a blown up section or a knockdown section change the angles of it A little, uh, yeah, a little more light down there. Oh, that's right, Bithron. I just, uh, when you said that, I went, oh, well, yep, that uh, that can't hurt. It's sort of like the some of the tank guys, like uh, the Chieftain, will say, okay, yeah, mobility firepower protection but there's also expense right if you can't afford to build this it doesn't matter how good the balances of those other three things are if you can't afford to build it not a great tank and a couple of other things that there's almost like a fifth or sixth category that that people would add on to those three and it's kind of a uh, the same thing for terrain one little a little bit of light right there in that little crack so that it looks more let me anyway, we gotta get some over here on this crack right over there I think we've lightened that up as much as we can I need to bring some of the lightest light down here all the way down to where the torch begins Yeah, Bithron, uh, the only thing I can figure that, like, a quick, easy way is you save some kind of 
that more cheaper styrofoam thing that's already kind of in a curve. The other thing too is you could uh, just lay out more of a circle there and uh, potentially even use one of those things that you use for doing uh, say cutting tiles around a piece of trim or something like that where it actually records the uh, the the curvature